this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If you return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sin vs. the World. I'm Septum Sin. This is Kotobuki Jake. Hi. We're here to show you what we got. <laughs> right. Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. Oh boy. And I guess uh, before we really uh, kick off with this, by the time you've seen this, um, there a great tragedy will have happened. And no, I'm not talking about the election. Um, we uh, we should mention that the uh, the great Sean Connery is no longer with us. You probably know oh. this by now, but <clears throat> dude was 90 and did a pretty good bit of stuff in 90 years. <laughs> Though had a very, uh, you know, it's sad. We were kind of hoping mm -hmm. that his swan song would be, mm -hmm. he'd come back just to correct the swan song. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was, it was okay. Technically, he had voice work after that, but yeah, he retired uh, from actual acting with the film that most people were less than thrilled by. Yeah, Kim said it was a terrible film. I don't think it was a terrible film. I just thought it was a, it wasn't a great film. <laughs> a great concept, and I have read the graphic novels. They're pretty good, but one day. But, you know. 90. I mean, we should all aspire as much. Right, right. You know. And um, so, yes, definitely uh, my, my little tribute for that was uh, watching uh, Last Crusade, which is I think his best role. Uh, and I happened to have a Bond film that I had not watched my copy, so I followed that up with From Russia With Love, so it's oh, good sure. times. Yeah. yeah. Kim watched Downton Abbey, uh, which was basically what we did for Halloween weekend was watch <laughs> Downton Abbey. Um, we watched a little bit of a horror stuff. We watched The Houses October Built uh, 1 and 2, but that was about mm -hmm. it. Oh, and Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. We did do that. Yeah, I didn't end up really doing anything Halloween-themed, unless if you consider <laughs> uh, Bloodsport to be a... Some people would call that a horror movie, I guess. <laughs> one that one that you won't get in on the conversation. Yes, on, so one that I may or may not, depending on how late yeah. they keep us. Um, you'll probably be done in time. I'm just wondering if you'll be awake for the discussions. Oh, I'll be awake. I just uh, will be. Y'all should watch these discussions that have <laughs> happened. Be, at this point. Uh, I will be in odd form. I will have been working. I've been up since four in the morning and uh, have worked straight until like eight ish, mm -hmm. which is great that I'm not that far from my polling place. So that'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, then I will probably just sit down uh, with a, a, a vat of alcohol and we'll see how that works and plays into it. One of my, one of my favorite martial arts films. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get good and drunk, but we'll, we'll see. Probably not, but <laughs> So I'll I got the next day off. So yeah, I got the next no, day off. Oh, so. won't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, well, we'll go ahead and start us off here. Yep. Um, so you remember I got this a little while yep. ago. This double feature. And I had said like it was missing something from it. And um, there was a special thing like that you could only get if you ordered uh, Crystal Lake Memories when it came out. But they did for like a very small window. They decided we will give you that bonus disc if you pay us fourteen bucks. 
Well, I said, you know what? This is an awesome thing, and this is a four-hour bonus disc. So I ordered it about like three months ago. And uh, finally, I've got it. And this is the bonus disc. It came today. Hmm. Hmm. As you can the see. complete this. history. So you've got like this whole thing. Um, and it's just a, it's not a huge one. But once I uh, open this bad boy, I'll probably just stick this, uh, this one inside the case. Hmm. A sort of like inside the little thing that hangs for the insert and uh, then it'll be much more complete this will pretty much complete crystal lake memories as mm. if it was one of those that came in the mail uh when originally ordered on its own so that's going to be pretty good i really need good to get into these two these are going to be awesome to watch mm -hmm. so so I'm going to kick off with something that's also awesome to watch. Uh, although many people would vehemently disagree with that assessment. Uh, this is a film that I have been sitting on here for a couple of months. I got it off of eBay. Uh, in part because we, we've got, at this point, there's sort of a running joke Um behind the scenes joke with inside movies galore. I think it's come out on the discussions every now and then, but I just, I have come up with a theme that I want us to do that I call mustache matinee. And <laughs> Mo and I have been kicking that back and forth as uh, I know we want to do it. I don't think anyone else is taking it seriously. <laughs> but one of the reasons why there is a movie that's based on a trilogy of books, the first of which I've read, and it's called Don't Point That Thing at Me. And we watched it. I watched it with Brandon and Kim, and we all loved it, but everyone else hated it. And that <laughs> is a film called Mordecai, <laughs> which, of course, stars Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp's fake mustache. And also, Ewan McGregor, Olivia Munn, uh, Paul Bettany, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Jeff Goldblum. That's a heck of a cast. It oh, really yeah. is. Paul Bettany's and hilarious in it. Paul <laughs> Bettany is hilarious. He's so good. That's all right, sir. I've got another <laughs> best line in the movie. But it is a fun. It's not a great movie. It's cheesy. It's your mileage will partly depend on your mileage with Johnny oh. Depp because he has lost a lot of brownie points with people with his antics. And um, a lot of people are over Gwyneth Paltrow as well. But, yeah, whatever. Uh, they're both very talented actors. And like I said, everyone here just, they get the spirit of the film. And the spirit of the film is goofy fun. And it's a hell of a lot more fun than the book. The book was darker and uh, kind of a almost a I almost want to say kind of a smarmy vibe, if that makes sense. But I've only read the first one. I kind of cooled toward after that, but it was still an interesting read. But I had to get this eventually, and I am going to keep pushing for Mustache Matinee until we get to talk about this movie. <laughs> uh, who knows? Maybe the movie will get put up on another one. Like if there was like a, like a detective movie uh, one or yeah. something like that, right. you know, that one could be put up with a uh, shot in the dark or something like that. Right. So essentially this one, he's sort of like an art forger slash mm -hmm. con man. And if I remember correctly, I think McGregor is a detective who's trying to, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's and Paltrow plays his wife <laughs> and yeah. And Bettany is his manservant jock. <laughs> who's constantly with the ladies. Exactly. <laughs> That's got to be one of his uh, more interesting characters that Bettany has played. Right, I felt right. like that was like, oh, that's a very different character for Bettany. Right. <laughs> but uh, now you, I'm sure, know about a sale that came out, a uh, Kino sale. Yep. I'm still waiting for the damn thing. <laughs> I got mine, but this is not from that sale. But it is a mm. Kino title. Okay. Matter of fact, I was debating this because I wanted it. But... Mm. 
because it's upgrading three films and mm. it's giving me two more that I didn't have. Mm. But Amazon also had a sale on it for $20 less than the sale price at Kino. Really? Yes. And that was the Sergio Leone Westerns collection. Oh, nice. Got it for 25. It was like 40 something at the uh, on the Kino sale. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Which I was like, eh. So, you know, I mean, you get the 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 Man with No Name trilogy. Which yeah. is awesome right there. Once Upon a Time in the West, which is an amazing film. This mm -hmm. is from somebody who doesn't like Westerns for the most <laughs> part. And then A Fistful of Dynamite, which I have not seen, but it looks very interesting, especially if yeah. you see the cover there. I mean, that's kind of... Yeah, I haven't seen that myself. Uh, so, you know, five films, two of which I don't have. Mm -hmm. I really need to get Once Upon a Time in the West mm -hmm. anyway. And upgrading my really basic bitch DVD right. of the Man With No Name trilogy. And this is skinnier than right. the Man With No Name trilogy that still feels pretty hefty in itself. Uh, yeah. That's, you know, I'm saving a little bit of room and I'm gaining two films for it. So that's yeah. not bad right there. Not no, bad at all. No, it's just kind of cool. You got Sergei Leone there with his yeah. rifle ready to shoot you. Right. He's going to shoot you if you don't get his collection. Right. And of course, I have that nice little swanky looking Blu-ray set for The Man With No Name. I think I have Once Upon a Time in the West on a two or three pack, hmm. but I don't have Fistful of Dynamite. So that it still would be an interesting, if I didn't have that one set with The Man With No Name, I'd oh. be very tempted. Because this one doesn't necessarily look like it has any special features. I'm sure yeah. it might have some. Sometimes Kino won't list them if they have them. And yeah. so I'll have to actually open this up to find out if there's any special features. Of they do that. very rarely list them on the back. So mm -hmm. once I found that out, that's that I'll let you mm -hmm. know. That might give you more of an idea if it's worth changing. Because yeah. you want some of those special features. My, my yeah. bare bones Walmart DVD edition uh, <laughs> does not have any. So I'm not losing yeah. out. <laughs> So speaking of Walmart bare bones editions that uh, I'm pretty sure you had a much nicer set of this, if I remember correctly, but I felt the need to go for it. This is a classic series, a big part of my childhood right here. And I, I don't know if it'll age well. I may end up watching it and going, Ugh, who knows? But it was great back in the day. <laughs> and that is the complete classic series collection of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The old animated series, the classic series from back in the day. 193 episodes, three hours of special features. Uh, yeah, that Ooh. could be pretty fun. But if I remember correctly, I think you have a really fancy set, don't you? Oh, yeah. I've got the turtle, yeah. man. Let me see if I yeah. can this up. I, actually, I, you won't be able to see it because I, I don't have the camera on me. This one's a pretty basic. Like, it looks like they didn't put too much effort into making it fancy. But that's a lot of stuff crammed into that. That's a pretty nice little package for what you get. So I do need to inspire. Get off the counter. Yeah, cat. Something up. Yeah. But um, that looking forward to revisiting that one of these days. Well, let me see. I can show you here. Um, as you can see, the good thing about my camera is I can do that. You can see it over there. You see the turtle van <laughs> underneath the. Uh, yeah, it's nice and blurry. Stuff. Yeah, well, it's a little bit hard because it's shaky. <laughs> right. It's a shaky thing. I was looking to see about my old Clint Eastwood collection while you were doing that, and I was like, it's just out of my reach. I'm tethered. Mm -hmm. um, but um, mm -hmm. maybe maybe in your next presentation I'll find it. Yeah. Um, so you know about me and the Amityville stuff. Yeah. I have this Amityville obsession to get every Amityville film, even if it has no relation. <laughs> If it has Amityville in the title, I want it. I'm still mad that the Amityville curse still has not had an American release. Uh, and this is an old one. It's like an 80s Amityville film, and it's 
only been released in the UK on uh, <laughs> DVD. Uh, but I might have to break down and get the UK release one day. I'm just keep hoping. They even had, when they did a new set release for the Amityville films, they called the set release the Amityville Curse. And they had some rarities, like it's about time in Amityville Dollhouse. Yet mm -hmm. they did not have the one that was titled the Amityville Curse. <laughs> but one of the ones I got, and uh, I actually was inspired to look this up because what movie one was uh, showing this. I don't know how I missed some of these, but some of these like small groups are still missed by some of the stuff I look at. Uh, there was a friend of his that uh, did this film called The Amityville Harvest. Hmm. Not exactly that uh, expensive, but um, still, I mean, I'm not sure I'm in any uh, hurry to watch it. Uh, in this intense horror tale, a visit to a crumbling mansion becomes a journey into sheer terror while staying at an aging manor to research its liquor smuggling history. Christina and her documentary video team interview their spooky host. <laughs> but no one can capture his image or voice on video. After shocking dreams and bloody encounters, the crew members fall under Vincent's hypnotic spell. Can Christina and her sister stave off Vincent's dark magic and survive Amityville's deadly horvet harvest? Horvest. <laughs> It's a harvest. <laughs> I don't know. Horvest. It could be good. It sounds interesting. It sounds like a vampire movie. Looks like it a looks vampire like one. movie. Uh, I don't know. That seems like a lot of people just grab onto the Amityville name and just kind of run with it. I think so, yes. <laughs> but um, still, I mean, I can't really knock it until I've seen it. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. The only one, there's only like one that I really hated. Mm -hmm. It's like the Amityville Exorcist. I, mm. I still I hate that film. I did not like that <laughs> film. Um, but I know that there are people who do like it. So I'm glad that you do, you people who do like it. If you're watching, right? Well, there's something out there for everyone, you know. I yeah. mean, Indeed. you know, some people would say this is a classic, and some people would not. And some people would say this is a classic, and some people would not. <laughs> indeed, indeed, and I will afford this okay. to you. And we did say seven tonight? Seven. Okay. The, um, and I know you like to include some anime at some point. Have you got one ready to go? or? I have one for the end. Okay. I can okay. One around if you need me to. Right. I was just making sure that we need uh, that we've got it covered, because my next five um, are all they have something in common. This is a, I'm going to be spreading out into some uh, different types of media here for the next. Uh, well, mainly one different type of media from what we usually use, books. <laughs> <laughs> but not entirely that. But um, I placed an order from Amazon a little ways back, and mainly because of one item that I'll be ending with. But I picked up some other stuff while I was at it. Um, I kind of used this as a chance to sweep up a couple of books I was eyeing and ended up grabbing a couple other things that caught my eye. So this, the rest will all be one order. And it will cover some different ground, so that should be fun. First up is a book that is um, actually the first in a pair of books, and I have the sequel thumped already. Uh, I picked it up a while ago, and for some reason, I just really wanted to get these books cheap. So that's one reason I waited so long. I don't really have a better reason than that. Um, there... Working in the library, I occasionally see completely random stuff I never heard of before, and I feel like I need to look at that and catch my attention. And I also am not as well-versed in the YA books as I'd like to be, especially as much as an overall overlap of interest as I tend to have with those kind of books. Um, 
So every now and then one will catch my attention. And this one did. And this is a book by Megan McCafferty called Bumped. And it's basically, it's set in a weird sort of, um, I guess you could call it a dystopia. It's a sci-fi series. It's um, kind of a weird one, but um, it's a world in which uh, human fertility basically goes off a cliff at 20-ish. So... Yeah, encourage people who are younger are not only encouraged to go ahead and have babies, it's big business. And twins are uh, Harmony and Melody. One of them is born into this world, and one of them is raised in a very, 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 very religious community that's very opposed to the system. And of course, they eventually end up meeting, and it's it's a fascinating series and it's very well written. One of the things I like is I like effective world building when people really, really, really put their effort into putting you in a, a new place. You know what I mean? And I just feel like the author just completely immerses you in the world and, and, and it was really well done. Um, and the books are quick reads, they're enjoyable, and now I finally have them both. <laughs> interesting. Interesting mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. I am, there's no such thing as a quick read for me. Uh, <laughs> my, my mind goes all over the page. A manga volume takes me a good week to a month to go through. So... It's uh, it takes a lot for me. There is some variety depending on the series. I can finish a Naruto book in about thirty five minutes, and One Piece takes me close to an hour. I mean, okay. it is. Zetsubo Sensei takes me forever to read. Zetsubo Sensei takes a while because that one's really dense. It's so, really <laughs> this is the one that I'm replacing, by the way. Ah, so, so you you're not saving see. a lot of space, but yeah. Well, if you think about it, this is only three of the films. That's true, yes. And, and you're getting them upgraded. Yeah. And both of us need to find out what that looks like on Blu-ray. I've had that set forever, and I haven't bothered watching it. <laughs> so I have another Amityville for us. Ooh. Yeah, there are actually four. Two on the horizon and two that I got. And mm. this one is Amityville Clown House. Oh, boy. So, you know, uh, this guy here, he's on the phone. For a moment, mm -hmm. I thought it was John Ritter, and then realized, no, that's nothing like John Ritter. Um, I they try. I want to say I almost look more like Michael J. Fox. But uh, they kind of play off the Amityville stuff here, mm -hmm. with, like the windows on the side there. They kind of have, like, the two windows up at the top here to make it look like it. So they're trying at mm -hmm. least to pretend a little bit of a connection to the series. <laughs> Featuring Mark Patton from mm. The Second Nightmare on Elm Street. <clears throat> Following the devastation of another family in Amityville toy box, which is funny because that one's being released later than this. The possessed toy finds its way into the home of a young married couple. Soon, strange noises haunt the home. The husband begins acting in unnatural ways. There is the, these are the latest victims of the legendary curse. So this one actually tries to connect itself to the movie. It's a sequel to a film that has not been released on DVD yet, but is coming next month. Mm. Or actually this month. So I guess I might as well wait until Amityville Toy Box comes out since I've got it pre-ordered. Right. And uh, then I can watch them both back to back since I've got the sequel. Mm -hmm. It's always, you know, best to have that sequel released first, right? right. I, mean, uh, I mean, for you, if, if you saw like uh, the second film was released first before the original film, that would make it like what? Would it make the... Uh, they release like a prequel? 
<laughs> and it's not, it's not, it, cause then, it, then the original release becomes a prequel or something because it's uh, taking place beforehand, right? <laughs> Who knows? Like if the Godfather, let's say if we had the Godfather trilogy, but the first one out in theaters was part two. Even yeah. if part one had been made beforehand, that would be kind of weird. <laughs> Well, that didn't quite work because I think they were made simultaneously. And part two yeah. does include a large flashback component, so it kind of is a prequel in a way. <laughs> True All enough. Right. Let's yeah. Right. There, there you go. Okay, my turn. Your turn. And now for something completely different. <laughs> so this is another book. Like I said, some books. This is one that uh, there's a couple of them that have this trait that I have them in my possession so awesome, so often from the library, I might as well own them. And I finally figured I might as well own them. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a really good book. This is the second edition of the Peterson Field Guide to Freshwater Fishes north of Mexico. <laughs> And I'm a fish fan. I always have been. Well, I am a, not talking about the band there, although I am. But <laughs> I've always enjoyed fishes. I think they're a really fun group. And this is a very, very useful guide. It does include nearly every known species in the U.S. and a couple of Canadian ones. Uh, there's always that debate over which... Uh, estuarine ones to include and they include a few but don't include all of them but this being the second edition it has more updated info on non-native invasives who and also unfortunately there are a lot of extinct species and that's downright depressing but uh this is a very useful guide it's very fun if you're not familiar with the peterson series they are generally a great series of guides so if you're a budding nature fan i would check that series out definitely <laughs> yeah. uh, great fish like the non-invasive carp oh <laughs> totally yeah invasive <laughs> yeah <sighs> Uh, <laughs> enough about that. that we yeah, well, you don't even need to get me started on that. I'll I'll do that when I I've got a movie waiting in these stacks, and I'll go to my soapbox when that one comes out. So this one was pointed out to me by Mo of all people when I got oh. that uh, Dragon Lives Again uh, movie, and mm -hmm. I didn't. I did some research, and this one actually is sort of an anime. So. Yeah works for that i've got so it would make my anime up to two so okay. the second one is definitely an anime there's no doubt this one okay. has, has a connection so that is attack of the super monsters <laughs> nice. which, by the way is the movie rendition of the series which is an anime by the way where they do combine different styles of animation. You got some claymation, you got some puppeteering, you've got some traditional. Apparently, it doesn't know what it wants to be. <laughs> so, I have been curious about this uh, since I um, mm -hmm. pointed it out. It will, if anything, it will uh, be a, an interesting watch and seeing a mm -hmm. lot of genres kind of mixed in together like that. That'll right. be fun, I think. Anyway, I mean, it's only 83 minutes. I mean, it can't be that bad, can it? So. <laughs> right. But uh, you never know. You never right. know with that stuff. So I, I leave that at that. Okay. So at the top of this uh, broadcast, if you will, <laughs> we uh, made reference to um, Sean Connery's choice of swan song. Uh, this next one is a supposed swan song, another actor who chose to leave the world of acting behind. Uh, of course, he's still with us, and as far as we know, healthy and young-ish, so he may change his mind. We never know. But he kind of went out. Not on top, but pretty high up. And I'm talking, of course, of Daniel Day-Lewis, who chose 
This is my number 18 film from 2017. He chose to go out with the uh, P.T. Anderson film Phantom Thread, mm -hmm. co-starring Leslie Manville and um, Vicky Cripps and some other folks. And basically, he plays a uh, clothier who's very meticulous and does puts a lot into his work, uh, much like his uh, approach toward acting, supposedly. Uh, got Lewis, of course, an Oscar nomination. I believe Manville picked up an Oscar nomination. Uh, if I remember, this one costume design, right? Wasn't that its one win? Yeah, I got the costume. Yeah, and it did get a few nods. Of course, P.T. Anderson films are usually pretty, I mean, they're always well made. And this isn't his most entertaining film by a far sight, but I found it much more entertaining than The Master. And the uh, Fred. <laughs> what's that? The Phantom Fred. <laughs> Sadly, this is not Phantom Fred. Wow. That would have been a great bonus feature. It really, <laughs> another running joke. But at any rate, I saw this, um, I think Amazon had it listed at five bucks. And I was like, okay, uh, that's done. <laughs> I was and, trying to look at it because I was like, that looks like yeah. a different edition than I have. It might be a like clear case. But I see, and that's the thing, it's a cool clear case. And I was realizing, yeah. I know why. So yeah. how does this one differ from that one? Oh, no slipcover? Exactly. Because if uh, I were to... Uh, yeah. So well, now I know why I was like, that looks so different. Ah. That mildly disappoints me. I'm not like Dane. I'm not obsessed with slipcovers, but I always like them. But this one looks good enough without. I don't I, know. I got it. All the custom slipcovers, I don't know. I mean, I have a hard time deviating from the original artwork. Yeah, I. me too. I don't, I can't really consider it. Uh, uh, well, it's not original. <laughs> So I got this awesome uh, new movie trilogy that came out uh, you know, a, a little while ago, just like maybe a year or two ago. And that was uh, the uh, series Back to the Future. So what do you think of my cool edition? It's got a nice shiny. I it's think I have that edition. It's on like a newish format. It's called DVD. You see... Unlike VHS, this can actually, you can select where you want to play your scenes from the menu. Isn't it amazing? That is so mm. cool. Okay, and no rewinding needed. Mm -hmm. See, and it's got this, like, you pull this back, and, and then it's got this uh, cool looking thing here. It's got a whole bunch of special features, which are these mm -hmm. things. If they actually talk about the film, you don't have to go on TV to find these documentaries anymore. You can actually get them on these discs with them. It's like having a whole new movie added. And see how look how shiny these discs are. I mean, can you imagine when we were getting it on VHS, like just just like a couple of days ago, like when when VHS was like the primary, uh, like how. Uh, how much this would have taken up? It would have been like a, a large thing. It would have been like this size or something. Okay, you seem to have uh, um, regressed to your childhood, which <laughs> I don't blame you given everything that's going on right now, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, this, of course, was my uh, previous edition. Yeah. And because this was my edition of these movies, and they're good, I never bothered upgrading to the Blu-ray when the Blu-ray released. Right. So when this new edition came out, I was like, okay, maybe I should upgrade. Hmm. So I got the 4K uh, Back to the Future release. Nice. Which uh, you can see these are all the – this is the Steelbook version. Very nice. Um. That wasn't really my intention, but they had had it on sale at the time, so it was cheaper than the regular 4K release. Nice. I did not get the one with the nice surf, I mean, with the nice board that Dane has, but that's all right. I got the steel books. He didn't mm -hmm. get the books, so that's fine. <laughs> books. Uh, all right. 
This also has some pretty cool stuff on it. Believe it or not, 35th anniversary is what it says here. <sighs> it's, it's hard to believe, isn't it? It's not yeah. older than I am, though. <laughs> not yet. No. Well, it's never going to be older than me. <laughs> Maybe once I'm dead, it'll start getting older than me. <laughs> if they're still alive. But uh, I like how these kind of go together. You notice how it like goes to form right. the uh, car if you put them together. Nice. But um, it's got some cool stuff. It does have all of the features that are on here, plus some. Mm. So it'll be worth getting if, if people want to upgrade. I'm glad I got this. I just want, hmm. yes, it is going to take up a little bit more space. This is about cool. the size of the VHS cool. tape. But yeah. this one's a heck of a lot cooler looking. And yeah. it's going to look really good when I fire up my 4K with this bad Okay. Board. Good deal. All right. I mean, uh, have you ever, uh, you said you probably have this edition? I think I have that edition, yeah. So you ever thought about upgrading to at least the Blu ray? Yeah, I thought about it. And uh, admittedly, if I get a really good, uh, like the set you have, if I if I do get a really good deal, that would be tempting. But mm -hmm. all right. five, it wasn't that bad. That's not too bad, no. Yeah. So next up, <clears throat> once again, something completely different. Uh, the last two have a little sub, uh, a sub uh, th thing. Um, incidentally, before I move on, I keep saying that, but uh, of course, you know, that is a famed uh, refrain in Monty Python's Flying Circus, and we should reiterate that that is getting a Blu-ray release next oh, week, yeah. so now, that'll that, be fun. Uh, actually, that's one thing I will say. Ugh. You want to? You, yeah, you will save a lot of space. I mean, if I the problem is it's almost <laughs> as costly as the yeah. uh, as the original set, yeah, because it's like a hundred and something, right. but. The size of like less than one of these discs. Yeah. Can you imagine? I, I put mine in my shelf like mm -hmm. this, and it still would save me a ton of room. That's called the 16 ton mega set, and it looks like it weighs about that much. Oh, yeah. This is like a, mm -hmm. a, a dinosaur right here. See, I have this slim down edition of that. It's the same thing, but it's thin packs instead of regular DVDs. So that does save a little space. But I am I'm glad, glad it's back in print, though, because it's yes. been out of print. So I'm glad. Yes. So anyway, um, the next two will have a small mini theme. And that is that, <clears throat> well, for one, the, the, the last one, like I said, is the main reason I placed the order. This one I'd never even heard of, but I saw it and I was like, oh, I must get that. But um, for various reasons, not the least of which I'm a nature geek, but for various reasons, I won't go into all of them yet. Um, I'm, if you will, stockpiling really, really good plants, uh, books on, well, yes, really good plants, really good books on plants and books on gardening, and, and but these two more are on plants themselves. And this one is a really cool little book that I picked up for not too much called Wildflowers of the Atlantic Southeast. Hmm. And you can see just from the covers and everything, it's got some cool stuff on it. But it's got a color, it's a like typical field guide with kind of color-coded color sections, really nice photos in many cases. Um, there's a good long descriptor in the beginning of a lot of different habitat types and, you know, maps of the provinces and stuff. But... Um, this is a really, it's going to be a pretty handy guide. It basically covers, let's see, what is it? It basically covers this area here. So, you know, Georgia, the Carolinas, the Virginias, Delaware, Maryland, huh. New Jersey. So, pretty good little section there. And um, <coughs> I just like, I was like, okay, I got to give that a try. I'm not blown away by it. Sometimes the maps are color-coded wrong, and there's less detailed info than I would really prefer. But again, for the casual user, it's an extremely useful guide, and it does cover a lot of species that are often left out of these guides. So pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well... We are ending my side of it anyway. Mm -hmm. 
my seventh pick is an anime. Mm, an nice. anime. An anime. Yeah. <laughs> So I actually presented a lot of these earlier, and I think there's a still a couple to go because I've been doing this in alphabetical order as I, I've been getting things. Right. So I got this this basic uh, lot from this person who's selling off their collection to uh, because they had two loves, manga and anime, but they can't afford both. So I decided I'm going to get rid of all my anime, and I'm just going to collect manga from here on out. Hmm. So, and I'm like, well, I'm more on the opposite end mm -hmm. where I just collect one manga <laughs> and I'm basically just getting anime uh, and, and other things from here on out. Um, matter of fact, the only time that I get books, I usually get them digitally. So unfortunately, that's not really because mm -hmm. it's like, I don't have room for everything. Uh, well, I don't either. <laughs> but one of these was used. It would have been up earlier, but I don't consider used to be a part of the collection until I've watched it all. Mm -hmm. It's a long freaking series. And it's a sub only. Hmm. And unlike uh, you who can, you know, pretty much listen to it without the sub and get a good idea as to what's going on, I have to read and then miss everything going on in the background. Um, so I usually end up having to rewatch a good sub about two or three times. That's hard when you've got a 40 some episode series. So that is the series Captain Harlock Space oh, Pirate. Nice. Now this is out of print, but, um, I really need to get Star Blazers because that's also out of print, but it's not quite expensive, expensive yet. I'm trying to collect everything in this universe. Uh, now, finally, uh, Galaxy Express 999 has fully released. I want to get everything in that universe. Uh, Captain Harlock is a part of it. Uh, Captain Harlock's like this space pirate who basically he was kind of driven into piracy when he tried to do something to help save the earth and then got blamed for the deaths of like tons of people. So mm. he decided to become a pirate and protect the earth as a pirate. Mm. Um, it's a kind of fun series. You can tell the art style for the, for the art author and Captain Harlock is a huge piece of anime history right there. I mean, I know you've heard of Captain Harlock. Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen anything with him and it's just kind of cool to uh see the world look at the art style see some of them when uh, some of the characters are older because not galaxy express 999 takes place afterwards uh like a good good clip after and uh, this one is i want to say 40 40 something 42 episodes in length i'm not greatly impressed by the way that the uh, discs are in this because you can see they're kind of uh like on top of one another yeah but still it's good to have it it's a large series i wouldn't mind re-watching it again it was kind of um I kind of went through it all, and I had to go through it all again. And it was uh, a difficult thing because there's a lot of, like, politics, uh, these aliens that look like uh, women from the planet Venus uh, that uh, are masquerading and trying to invade the planet. And hmm. uh, that's pretty much the whole of this of this 42-episode arc. Hmm. So you get quite a bit there. But still quite fun if you like a, a good space anime you know you, you want your animu you, you can get your animu <laughs> all right okay and so my last one is literally big this is a heavy hefty piece of work here <laughs> all right and this is something that i again I spent, I was very, very happy that they got several copies for the library. And I kind of just grabbed one. <laughs> and then a few months later, I switched it out and grabbed another one. <laughs> and finally, I was like, I really need to have this for my own personal use. 
it is a tremendously important book for me as a as a plant geek, as a native gardener, as someone who loves going out in the field and finding stuff, uh, as an iNaturalist geek, you know, what have you. I frequently reference this on iNaturalist because it's a really, really, really good way of knowing what's going on here in the state of Virginia. And that is a book called The Flora of Virginia. Wow. And look at that thing. That is a massive book there. How long will it take you to read that, you think? <laughs> A couple hundred years. <laughs> and, you know, it's not very heavily illustrated. You know, they have a few here or there scattered about, line drawings mostly. There's a large section in the beginning that does have some color photographs <laughs> that's more about habitats, again, You've got the family key, and then you get into the individual families. This one does use um, some very updated um, classification systems. So I learned a lot about the current state of classification. Some of it's weird. So a lot of traditional stuff's been thrown out the window with DNA uh, studies. But anyway, again, this is a really cool, really important book. I had to get it. It's a pricey one, which is one reason why it took me a while. Um, but finally got it. And, yeah, good text. That's a good weapon if you need to throw it at somebody. It is. It is. Now, it's an expensive weapon. If you're going to spend that much money on a weapon, you might as well, uh, you know. <laughs> so, so how much is the companion piece, the fauna of Virginia? Yeah, no, flora and fauna. <laughs> You know, it would be awesome if they tackled that. And honestly, there's so freaking many plants. You could do macro vertebrates in probably a third of that size. But then you got insects. I have uh -oh. a feeling your insect book would be like three times. <laughs> <laughs> so any, uh, any plants in there that would be good for the uh, children's garden? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Actually, I have one on order. I'm waiting. I'm trying out a company I've never tried before, Gardens of the Blue Ridge. Oh. And I'm still waiting for the order to arrive, but I have ordered a plant that is an essential to that garden. It's um, oh. called fly poison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for those of you who are listening uh, and don't get this, no, do not get these for your children. Uh, this is a inside joke between us about a yeah. children's garden. Oh, so, okay, okay. The origins of this are <laughs> when I was working a while back at one of my previous employers, they actually sprung for us to get our certification as state horticulturists if we wanted to. And I really wish I had kept that certification up. I need to probably go back and recertify. But um, as part of the garden design course, <laughs> they gave us the design and said, well, what's wrong with this issue? First of all, they had thorny prickly barberries surrounding the children's play area, <laughs> which also happened to be underneath the power lines. And I just... I was amused by this. <laughs> Not so a good practice. <laughs> so now we keep at, thinking of things we could add to the children's garden. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What's that one uh, that's further south, like the poison apple? What was that one? The uh, it was a tree of poison or some sort. I can't think of the name of it. Well, there is a Floridian one called poison tree. Um, yeah. And I learned recently, there's apparently an Australian plant that actually produces venom. <laughs> <laughs> These are some great ones. Uh, with the, uh, what was it? The uh, Spanish Inquisition spider is a uh, yes. that uh, goes around. Yes. <laughs> Which incidentally has its origins in that uh, Monty Python thing. <laughs> well, no one expects it. <laughs> no one expects it. <laughs> so with that being right. said, 
said, I hope you all have enjoyed these pickups mm -hmm. this week. Uh, I yeah. hope you have enjoyed your week of elections. Maybe and, we can uh, be a nice ray of sunshine in a sea of clouds. I, I know that I will probably be barely awake today, just enough to probably edit and kick this thing out. But uh, I will have it out today, which is Wednesday after the election and uh i'll probably go back to sleep again <laughs> so with that being said i hope you've had a good video uh click that like button if you've enjoyed it hit that subscribe and share because it's great to have our word shared with everyone mm -hmm. And of course, comment. Is there anything in the pickups that you're like, ooh, what did you pick up this week? We always like to look at what other people have uh, picked up. That's uh, why I watch pickup videos. So let us know in the comments below. Mm -hmm. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.